We all know what we want from a holiday. Not many of us know where to find it, let alone two hours or less from home. We have to make few more difficult decisions than where to go on holiday, or more important. It's a subject that we on Guernsey have been giving some thought to for some time. In fact, we've been studying it for years. Now, like all good scientists, we've come up with a formula for finding the ideal holiday. We think you'll find it helpful. It's a simple quiz, a ten-point test which can be applied to any holiday destination in the world. So see how your holiday choices measure up. We'll tell you how to score at the end. Question one. Is your holiday destination like anywhere else on Earth? The answer should be no. Of course, it helps if the place is an island dropped in the sea between two highly individual neighbours, yet unlike either of them. Islands are different anyway, and the smaller the island, the more different it will be. An island five miles, that's eight kilometres wide, by nine miles, 15 kilometres long, which has its own post office and stamps and bright blue post boxes, is different. It has its own banknotes. They're the same as ours, really, so you don't have to worry about changing money. And in common with other exotic islands like Australia and Jamaica, you drive on the left. Yet the island of Guernsey is self-governing. Closer to France than England, the place names are in two languages, so you're never quite sure where it belongs. At the same time, this is no Ruritanian comic opera state, but a self-sufficient business community and international finance centre. Being a small island, it has tiny roads. Sometimes you feel as if you're driving through one of those model villages. Some of the roads are more like gullies. The hedges here are the only high rise. Often the drives to the houses are wider than the roads. The houses themselves are pretty buildings, old stone and wise windows. All have lovely gardens. They give the place a well-kept, tidy feel. The people have a sense of quality, no hassle with hawkers. Just friendly people with a warm and genuine welcome. Question two. Is there plenty of good scenery? Is it well cared for and enjoyable? Well, on the last point, if you have 16 miles of coastal paths, it says a lot. Also, this is scenery that can be enjoyed whatever the time of year. The weather is mild, never so hot you don't stay in the sun, and seldom so cold it's icy. It can be changeable though, and in winter the storms can be spectacular. What we on Guernsey would recommend is to find an island where they appreciate the value of tourism, but know its cost as well. That way, they'll provide everything their visitors need and protect everything they come to see. So try to find an island that doesn't build hotels on all its beaches or cover its coasts with caravans. Question three. Is there an interesting town, one with a bit of history to it and plenty of character? St. Peterport, the main town on Guernsey, is a good example of what to look for. It has kept all the best bits of the past. In some parts, like the quayside, the only changes over the years have been that the cobblestones and sailing ships have gone, and the pictures are now in colour. The harbour is a great free show. There's always something going on, and it's truly international. Take a ten-minute stroll, and you'll find yourself in a piece of Paris at the author Victor Hugo's house. Just down the road, step back even further in time at 26 Cornet Street, where it's not just the costumes that are original, the shutters open like mechanical curtains. Can I have the bonbons with the Guernsey cream, please? Yes, 225. All the best towns have good markets. Just about everything here is either grown or caught locally. And a holiday town should have the kind of shops you won't find at home. Restaurants too, in every price range. Question four, are there lots of things to see? 
You need some diversions on holiday. Things to make you wonder, like Guernsey's little chapel, made entirely from fragments of China. And some of the world's most expensive fish at the koi farm. And things to admire, like the workmanship at the many different craft centres. Then there are things to make you think. The Occupation Museum, and along the emplacement at the harbour, Castle Cornet and the Maritime Museum. More tradition also at the castle, this time a ceremony, and one of the world's noisiest time checks. Every day in summer, a cannon is fired at noon. Question five, does your holiday offer some great days out? To score here, you really need to think of somewhere where there are more islands nearby, though you're unlikely to come up with any other island like Sark. An early morning ferry takes you away from life as you know it, to a land straight out of a children's storybook. There's no risk of traffic jams because there are no cars. The only motorised transport allowed are the tractors, one of which takes you up the hill to the village. Even the ambulance has had its engine removed. You can hire a bike, but for the less energetic, there are horse-drawn carriages to take you around the island's sights, which include spectacular cliffs and beautiful beaches. You needn't limit yourself to a day trip, as there are plenty of places to stay on Sark. The miniature village is all part of the fairy tale. It has its own power station, postman and pub. Most islanders have at least two jobs. The judge, called the seneschal, works at the power station. The blacksmith is also the clerk or greffier and the coalman is the constable. The school doubles as the parliament building and Sark boasts one of Britain's smallest jails. It's rarely used. The seigneur, a sort of lord of the manor, can often be seen working in the walled garden, which is open to the public at his home, the seigneury. By tradition, he's the only islander permitted to keep doves. Even the cats seem to respect this ancient custom. The seigneur is also entitled to a thirteenth part of the islander's wealth, and the old tithe cart in which the dues were collected is on show. Herm, halfway between Sark and Guernsey, is entirely different. Where Sark has a life of its own, which visitors are there to see, Herm's life is tourism, and the island famous for its beaches is there to see visitors. There's one hotel, and guests either stay in the main building or in romantic cottage rooms. None has such irritants as clocks, televisions or telephones and Herm preserves its tranquillity by discouraging its visitors from playing transistor radios. Many people choose to stay in self-catering cottages. They can always eat in the Mermaid pub. Some travel to Herm just to have dinner. Don't worry if it turns cooler in the evenings. Herm claims to sell more Guernsey sweaters than anywhere else. The small select parade of shops has a policy of high sales and low prices. A lot of locals do their gift shopping here. Not many holidays have a herm on their doorstep. Alderney, the third of Guernsey's neighbouring islands, is really a single scattered village. The Channel Island closest to France, it also in a way feels the most remote, with a pace and quality of life that has almost been lost on the mainland. It's something the birds seem to recognise. There are so many species, people come from around the world to watch them. Alderney has its own railway for visitors and a golf course with views so distracting they almost amount to a handicap. New building is strictly controlled and the beaches are as nature made them. The old town of St Anne is not short of interesting shops and places to eat and stay. Its pastel-painted buildings have the air of a fishing village, even though St Anne is in the middle of the island. But then, nothing on Alderney is very far from the sea. There's a saying that if an Alderney man offers you a drink, you should never refuse. The Diver, one of Alderney's most famous pubs, still sprinkles sand on the floor, just like the old days. 
Just across the road, by the small harbour, is a restaurant where visiting yachts book up to six weeks in advance to be sure of a meal and the table of their choice. Question six. Is there a good choice of places to stay? It's always important to choose a destination where all accommodation is inspected and graded. Guernsey is a perfect example. Then you can stay where you like, from bed and breakfast to self-catering cottages and apartments, in the confidence that they will be of a uniformly high standard. The same goes if you want a touch of luxury. Guernsey, for example, offers several four-star hotels with a worldwide reputation for good food and fine wines. Not to mention a honeymoon suite with a four-poster bed. Question seven. Are there lots of things to do? Whether you enjoy the gentler activities like walking or cycling, or something more adventurous, you need to find a holiday where the choice of things is big enough to be sure you'll be able to do exactly what you want to do. And it's never too late to learn something new. Perhaps you have a game which needs improving and you're looking for expert tuition. It's easily arranged on Guernsey. And in the Beau Sejour Leisure Centre, there are squash courts and an indoor swimming pool, as well as many other sport facilities. For youngsters, there's the chance to learn new skills. Clean, safe beaches, like those on Guernsey, should be insisted upon by all ages. Check your destination's calendar of events. Few places will have quite as much going on as Guernsey. There's the colourful Battle of Flowers in August, powerboat racing in September, and the Salon Culinaire, the Chef's Grand Prix, in April. And that's just a selection. Question eight. Does your holiday give good value for money? Is it as good as this for families? Wonderful places to explore and special menus and facilities for children in many restaurants and hotels. That's value. So is the modest cost of food, which is as fresh as only local produce can be. You can include the flowers in that. They're for sale at the roadside all over the island. Car hire too is exceptionally reasonable and it can be pre-booked to meet your flight or boat. Then when it comes to buying souvenirs, the prices will be hard to beat because in the Channel Islands, there's no VAT. Question nine. Is the place you have in mind right for a romantic holiday? It's part of the holiday dream, somewhere to be by yourselves with time for one another. Somewhere to discover together where you can walk without meeting a soul. The beaches seem to stretch infinitely. No better place for a romantic stroll before dinner. A quayside restaurant on the front at St. Peter Port is the perfect place to round off an evening, with a view towards Herm and the other islands across the peaceful harbour. And finally, question 10. Is your holiday destination easy to get to? By air, it could hardly be easier to get to Guernsey. There are 16 direct departure points from the United Kingdom. Birmingham, Bournemouth, Bristol, Cardiff, East Midlands, Edinburgh, Exeter, Glasgow, Jersey, Leeds Bradford, London Heathrow, London Gatwick, London Stansted, Manchester, Norwich and Southampton. By sea you can sail from Poole and Weymouth. British Rail offers attractive through fares from any station to Weymouth. The UK service is both frequent, with up to 10 flights a day from southern England, and highly personal. The high ratio of cabin crew to passengers means that everyone can be sure of individual attention. Air UK, Britain's third biggest airline, is the only one to serve Guernsey from London Heathrow. Air UK also flies direct from Southampton, and from Britain's newest and most passenger-friendly airport, Stansted. From there, there are convenient connections to Scotland and Newcastle. Jersey European Airways is a story of success. The only privately owned internal airline in the United Kingdom, it's also the fastest expanding and the only one to operate jets into Guernsey. 
It has non-stop flights to Guernsey from London, Gatwick, Birmingham, Exeter and Bristol, and direct services from Manchester, Belfast and Paris. Jersey Europeans' cabin crew training places a strong emphasis on personal attention, and fares have been tailored to meet the wide and varied demands of different kinds of passengers. British Airways Express brings to Guernsey all the benefits of flying the world's favourite airline and the advantages of flying from London's Gatwick Airport, the most popular UK airport for flights to Guernsey. Connection flights from Leeds, Bradford and Newcastle are also available. Competitive fares, short check-in times and renowned service standards make British Airways Express the choice of many. More information is available from British Airways or travel agents. Orini Air Services provides Guernsey with a high-frequency flying bus service between the other islands, as well as to France and to Alderney from Southampton. The famous yellow aircraft fly every 30 minutes throughout the day between Guernsey and Jersey, not quite so frequently to Alderney. So with their other routes between Guernsey, Cherbourg and Dinar, Orini is ideal for those special day trips or for planning two centre holidays in the Channel Islands. And the choice of fares means there's a ticket designed for whatever your requirements are. Condor operate a high-speed, high-tech, car-carrying catamaran twice a day to Guernsey from Weymouth. Cruising at 40 miles an hour, it does the direct journey in just two and a quarter hours. On board, the craft is more like an aeroplane than a ship, with hostess service, snacks, a bar and duty-free sails. Computerised, state-of-the-art ride control ensures your comfort. Condor's fares are very competitive, and the company also runs a smaller vessel on regular crossings to St. Malo via Jersey, which is ideal for day trips. On British Channel Island ferries, the journey is the start of the holiday. An invigorating cruise on the morning service from Poole lands you in the heart of St. Peter Port six hours later. Or travel by night and use the voyage to sleep. There are two sailings daily. On the popular overnight sailing, you have a choice of restaurants, offering anything from a snack to a relaxing three-course meal. Then there are duty-free shops, bars, children's playrooms and cinemas. And of course, your car goes too. Easy with Poole having such good links with the motorways. So how did your holiday do in the test? There are lots of places that will have scored two or three out of ten. A few may have scored five or six, and we can even think of an eight. But try as we might to come up with an alternative, only one place we know scores all ten. Guernsey. You know what you want from a holiday. Now you know where to find it. First stop on your way to Guernsey is the accompanying information pack, where you'll find all the details you need to choose the holiday you know is going to score 10 out of 10.